Welcome to today's webinar, Microsoft Project Going Beyond Excel. I'm Christine Irons. Uh, I was just looking at the participants here. Actually, I see a lot of names I recognize. It's people coming back from previous webinars. Uh, some of you have been in the training. That's great. It's nice to see you guys. So this webinar is um, going to walk you through uh, why you might want to go to Microsoft Project uh, when it comes to your task management. So I'll be doing some comparisons of Excel and Project. But before we even get into that, um, I'm going to, well, start introducing myself, uh, just in case you haven't been in a webinar before. I'm Christine Irons. Uh, I've been with JN Software and CompUEs now for, I guess it's going on to three years. It's been a while, time goes by fast. Um, but before I started with these companies, I was working, I was living in Toronto actually. I was working at York University, worked there for a long time, kind of doing the same thing where I was an instructional designer, trainer, learning specialist and moved back to Ottawa three years ago. And uh, now I work as an instructor for CompuEase and JN Software. So we run, run the training, we run, we run webinars. Uh, I don't know if you've seen any of our YouTube videos, our quick tips, we do a lot of stuff. And uh, just a fun fact, because the instructors like to throw some fun facts at you. When I'm not training, what I do in my, um, the other time that, uh, that I have during the day is I am a singer. So I'm actually the lead singer of an Ottawa band called SOS, the ABBA Experience. So if any of you guys are ABBA fans, uh, we travel around Ontario and we perform the music of ABBA. So hopefully we'll be getting back into it soon. Okay, so before we start our webinar, you guys are using Ring Central, and uh, I wanted to point out in the bottom right here of my slide that I'm showing you, in your Ring Central, you'll have a little, it's like a command bar that you can, well, you can load the participant list if you're curious, but you can also load the chat window. With the chat, uh, first of all, we've got Melanie on hand right now, so that if you're having any audio or visual issues, um, Melanie's here, so pop a chat in. She'll help you out, let her know what the problem is. She'll work with you. But the other thing is, um, just so that the webinar runs really smoothly from beginning to end, what I'll do is, I'll go through the webinar, go ahead if you have questions, put your questions into the chat. I'm not ignoring you. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna wait until the end of the webinar and then I will check the chat and we'll have time to go through all of your questions. So if you think of them during the webinar, put them in. If you wanna wait until after the webinar, I'll give you a couple of minutes to submit your questions and then I'll answer all your questions then. Okay, so guys, don't think I'm ignoring you. Um, but definitely, Melanie is checking that chat all the time if you have any issues. And if something happens, like your internet or something drops partway through the webinar, don't worry. Just go back to your email. You can log into Ring Central again. It will pick up where you left off. Well, it'll pick up where I am, I guess. And uh, same as the phone. If you decided to use the phone to dial into the webinar instead of use your computer audio, just call in again. Okay, you can pick it up again, so don't worry about that. So just a little bit of information before I actually get into the webinar. I get asked a lot, um, you know, I introduced myself as Christine from JN Software and CompUEs. You know, why am I introducing myself from two different companies? They're actually sister companies. Um, JN Software, provides training, database, consulting services throughout Canada. Whereas CompUEs provides the same, the training and services, um, but specifically in Ottawa and uh, the Quebec area. So JN Software, Canada, United States, uh, CompUEs, specifically Ottawa and Quebec, but it, they're sister companies. Um, JN Software has been around since 2002. So they offer um, online 
public and private classes with a live instructor, always with a live instructor. And uh, they also offer private on-site training. If you prefer to have somebody come to your site, they can come on site. And they also offer consulting and database services. And CompUEs, same kind of thing. They offer the online public training, uh, the on-site, either at your location, but CompUEs also has a public training facility downtown Ottawa. So we get a lot of people coming at, in a classroom environment from the Quebec side, from all of Ottawa. So if you want to do a public class, you can come to the training center. Otherwise, you can join the online classes. Again, always with a live instructor, never anything pre -recorded. Recorded. And then we also provide the one on one private group training, again, either on site or online. So lots and lots of options for your support and for your training. And what makes us stand out is uh, first of all, we have really fast quality customer service. Uh, so if you're dealing with the administration side, the turnaround is really quickly when you have questions or you have to work with us to set things up. Uh, so very fast. All of our trainers that we use are highly skilled, experienced professional trainers that have been around for a long time. They've been doing this for a long time. They have a lot of experience. Um, and the best thing I would say is that um, all of our classes are guaranteed to run. So if you sign up for a class and you happen to sign up, I don't know, maybe at a slower time and it ends up that you're the only person in the class, you never have to worry about the class, your class being canceled. So we will give you a call, let you know you're the only person. Uh, we will still do the training with you. We'll offer other options, but the nice thing is it will never be canceled on you. So it's guaranteed. And we also have a guaranteed learn or come back free policy on all of our public classes, which is beautiful. Uh, we also offer 24 seven after training support. So after you've done software training, because we do offer professional skills as, as well. After you've done software training, um, if you have any questions, you have 30 days. Uh, it'll tell you in your voucher when it can be triggered. So you can trigger it. You have 30 days for 24 seven support, help desk support. And like I said, we offer both software and professional skills. Like our software training, um, we offer all of the Microsoft products, the Excels, the Words, PowerPoint project, obviously, that's why you're here, SharePoint, lots and lots of Microsoft project, uh, products. The Adobe training, we do some programming and specialty courses, and we're always adding to this. So always check back because we're adding. And you know what, guys, if you don't see something listed here, don't assume that we don't do it. Contact us, give us a call. Uh, there is a very good chance that we will be able to provide training for you. And we also offer the professional skills training. Courses like the communication skills, team building skills, actually those are really popular right now with everybody kind of working from home now. Um, you know, it's really difficult uh, to, to get that sort of team environment. So, uh, you know, consider doing some of these professional skills training courses. And the other thing that we offer is uh, we've started offering a 20 minute uh, consultation. It's free for those of you that have signed up for this webinar that are at this webinar. Um, what you can do is you can book a time with us and we will talk to you. We'll find out information about how you work, how your business works, and then we will give you suggestions. We'll find out where your gaps are. Um, the suggestions might be training. It might be, we have a lot of free resources, so it could be something as simple as we'll direct you to one of the webinars or uh, we offer a lot of video tips. I don't know if you've been on YouTube, but we have a lot of video tips up there um, teaching you how to do things. Uh, we have blog resources, that type of thing. So it's not hard sales. I will tell you it's not hard sales. What it is is we're here for you. We will give you suggestions for what you might need. It could be consulting. Um, and then it's up to you. 
go from there, but you will never get a hard sale, but it, it is free. So take advantage of it. So we do offer a lot of services. All right, so what you're here for, the webinar, Microsoft Project, Going Beyond Excel. What we are going to cover in this webinar, let me just, you need to concentrate on the webinar, not me so much. Okay, what we're going to cover is, um, first of all, what would it be like using Excel to track your tasks and resources? Just give you a little quick idea of what you might go through, or some of you might have experience in that already and you're pulling your hair out, uh, but I'll just go through just a quick experience with you. And then what I'll do is I'll give you eight reasons to move to Microsoft Project. So we'll, we'll talk about uh, where Excel kind of falls short, um, as well as what does Project offer that Excel doesn't offer then definitely we will jump into Microsoft Project. So I will load Microsoft Project. I've already created a project that you can take a look at and I will show you around Microsoft Project. I'll give you an idea of what it's like viewing your project. Uh, we'll take a look at task dependencies or they're called linking tasks in project. Uh, we'll discuss what that is when we get there. Uh, we'll look at resource management and shared resources in a project. And uh, then we'll take a look at the reporting features that come with Microsoft Project. So how can you quickly create that report, create that chart based on everything that you've logged in Microsoft Project? So you'll get a good idea of what project's about and whether this could really help you out or, or suit your company's needs. And then, like I said, we'll take the questions at the end. So, you know, if I haven't talked about something or mentioned something that you're curious about or you're confused about something I talked about, put it into the chat for sure. So let's get started. I will do just a small presentation at the beginning. Don't worry, it's not a great big long presentation. I will go through a bit of a presentation at the beginning. But like I said, we will jump into Microsoft Project. So I don't know if you guys have ever had anyone tell you when you had to do something, just throw it into Excel. Like I've heard that so many times uh, before I was a trainer and I was working in admin. Um, anything that I had to do, it was like, just throw it into Excel because Excel has all the columns and the rows set up. So it's easy to track information, obviously budgets, we'll get into that. Um, but that's the solution for everything. And Excel can be used for so many different purposes, uh, even things that you wouldn't even think of. But you can use Excel for things like, obviously, budget work. That's, that's where Excel shines. That's, that's the purpose behind Excel, to keep track of your budgets. Excel comes with data visualizations like charts uh, to visualize your data and pivot tables. Uh, you can create dashboards. I love doing dashboards. But you can create dashboards in Excel to summarize your work. You can do data modeling. Um, you can even use Excel as a database. So you, maybe you're not even going to do anything with calculations. You just want to store some data. So if it's a simple database, yeah, by all means, go ahead and throw it into Excel. I've even seen Excel used for things like cross-stitching patterns, um, Sudoku, Sudoku, I always can never can pronounce this, Sudoku puzzles, and crossword puzzles, like things that you just wouldn't think about. And that's why I say, people say just throw it into Excel, okay? So it just makes sense that when it comes to task management, you would think, hey, just throw it into Excel. So let's take a look at it. So the most common ways for companies to save money is to use the applications that they have installed for multiple purposes and things that they were not originally designed for. And what happens is you end up stretching software to its limits. So you can no longer, it's sort of, it doesn't meet the needs of its users. 
And when you get to that point, when you're kind of pulling your hair out, you know it's time to invest in specialized software created to do what you need to do. So what usually happens with Excel is it starts off innocently enough. You're thinking, ah, I'll just throw this task list into Excel. Here you go. Let's keep track of the task names. And hey, you know what? I'll put a column for complete and I will mark off whenever it's complete. You can do it with check marks, X's, whatever you want to do. Then as you start working, uh, you realize, hmm, you know what? I really should start tracking things like start dates and finish dates. And hey, if I'm doing start dates and finish dates, let's do uh, durations as well. So I know how long each task is going to take, which means if you're going to start tracking durations, rather than you have to manually do the math in your head, you start thinking, oh, well, okay, now let's get into some simple calculations so that Excel can automate some things for me. I don't have to do it myself. So, okay, let's do some calculations. Then you start thinking, oh, this project has grown. I really need to track some of the resources. So you recreate a resource column. Okay, it's getting bigger and bigger. Then with the resource column, you're thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice to have drop downs where I can choose the resource from a drop down, which means, hmm, I remember taking an Excel course and they taught us data validation where you could create a drop down, which means I'm going to start another sheet in this workbook where I can list all of my resources and maybe what their salaries are in case I want to start tracking costs. So now you've got another sheet in your workbook and drop downs going and then you're thinking, oh, costs. Well, maybe I should start tracking costs. But then when you start to get into costs, you're thinking, well, geez, each task that I have has more than one cost. I only have one place to track costs. How am I going to do this? Multiple costs per task? This is starting to get really complicated. Then the formulas start to get really complicated to do things like automation. And then that Gantt chart that you were told that you could create in Excel by fudging Excel charts to create a Gantt chart, it's not working properly. And we'll talk about Gantt charts in a few minutes, but it's not working properly. Did somebody overwrite a formula? Like, what did I do? Why is this Gantt chart not working prob properly? And oh, it's so much manual work and you start shaking your head and like I said, you're pulling your hair out. It just becomes overwhelming in Excel, all the work you have to do. So sit back, relax. Let me show you eight reasons why you should move to Microsoft Project to track your projects. Now, uh, honestly, I could come up with more than eight reasons, but we only have an hour for this webinar. Plus, I want to put aside some time to uh, get to your questions. So um, I settled for these eight. Simple as that. So let's start here. Eight reasons. Number one, Excel is mistake prone. So because a lot of what you do in the way of tracking your tasks in Excel, is not automated. It's a manual process. You know, unless you get into some formulas and functions and even put those aside, a lot of what you do is a manual process, which means it's easy to make mistakes. It's easy to overwrite calculations and project usually projects usually require more than one person coordinating and updating tasks. It, it's, it shouldn't just land on one person's shoulder. So, um, with Excel, once you open up an Excel file, as you know, you're the owner of the Excel file and other people that open it up, it becomes read only, which means they cannot update. So what are your options? I mean, you could share your Excel file. The problem with sharing an Excel file so that multiple people can update it is um, there are a lot of formatting things that Excel doesn't allow if your file, to sh file is shared. So what you end up doing is every time you need to do certain updates, you have to ask everybody to close the file and then do your updates and then everybody can open it up again. That really becomes cumbersome. Another option is to create multiple versions of the file. 
but then it's difficult to track and mistakes are made, you start missing deadlines. So really what usually happens is the project that you're doing in Excel resides on one specific person's computer, which means, you know, it's a problem when work needs to be updated. You constantly have to go to that person or what if that person's sick, they're not there for the day. Who's going to update it? Who has access to it? Number two, Excel is inefficient. So again, going back to what I was just talking about, the person keeping the latest version of this, the file has the burden of keeping it accurate. So it means that person has to constantly ask other people, are you done yet? Are you done yet? with their tasks. It's time consuming, it's inefficient, and you know, it can sour team relationships. So basically the keeper of the spreadsheet is responsible for quality control. Number three, it's inflexible. Excel's inflexible. I know, like me, I love Excel. I, Excel is one of the courses that I love teaching more than any other course, well, besides project. <laughs> but I love Excel, but it is inefficient, especially when it comes to project management. It's quite limited. It doesn't have the automation that Microsoft Project has, which I'll show you. And you basically have to become a super user with a PhD in VLOOKUP and other advanced functions to try to get it to automate things that are just built into project that it just does it automatically. And there's a good chance that your whole team doesn't have a PhD in VLOOKUP. And so again, then they just rely on one person. Number four, it's a manual process. So imagine your VP is making a presentation to senior leaders and they need a project update. There is no built in automated reporting in Excel. Yes, I know there's pivot tables, there are charts, but it's not automatic. You have to set it up every time. So you have to go in, build the chart, uh, massage the chart or the pivot table or whatever you have to do for your VP. So every time they ask for something, it's going to take you a while to put it together. And then every time you put together reports, your um, workbook in Excel is growing bigger and bigger because it's, you start creating separate tabs, more and more and more tabs start to appear in your project. It starts to get very confusing. And, you know, what if the VP asked you at some point, oh, um, can you, I, I have to show them a comparison of where we are right now with our tasks and our project compared to where we were three months ago, sort of like a progress report. And then you're thinking, oh, I just, I overwrote things. So if a task got delayed, I just overwrote it. It's going to take six days now instead of three days. I don't have where we were three months ago. So now what am I going to do? These things are all automated in project. Number five, summary tasks. So a feature that project has that Excel really doesn't have is something called summary tasks. It's a way of grouping tasks together into a phase. So if you start working on a whole bunch of tasks and you realize that there's some kind of relationship between the tasks um, where they could be grouped into a grouping of tasks, uh, maybe call the phase preliminary phase and then you know part of your preliminary phase is task one, task two, task three, task four, task five and then you have another phase. This can be done very easily in project. Whereas in Excel, you can indent, you can see here, you can indent tasks to make it look like it's all part of a phase, part of a topic, but the indents are just cosmetic. They don't mean anything. It doesn't do anything. Excel doesn't see it as a phase where project sees it as a phase. So it's not just visual, but, um, project sees it as a summary detail relationship that actually has meaning and it can be displayed and used in so many different ways.
task dependencies and critical paths. Uh, so again, in Excel, there really isn't such a thing as task dependencies or links. Um, not linking in the way that you might be thinking when we teach you how to link one cell to another. Uh, you'll see when we get to tasks, when I show you Microsoft Project, uh, what happens when you actually link tasks. You can see it as a picture down here at the bottom, um, a visual of it where one task is linked to another so that if one task gets delayed, it delays the next task automatically. Um, Excel really doesn't have that built in. And, um, project will also start to calculate what's called a critical path, which will give you an understanding of how much wiggle room you have in your schedule if something falls off the rails. So if things get delayed, set back, um, what is your critical path that will push out the end date of your project? What's going to delay the end date of your project? These things are not built into Excel. portfolios or you call them master projects and sub projects so what if your project grows bigger and you find that you need uh, several people working on sort of sub projects of the main project so you want them to update their own sub projects uh, Microsoft project has this built in. You can link all of your projects together into a master plan. So you can have one master plan that shows all the sub projects and you could have one um, project manager that's responsible for the master project and taking a look at how everything's going overall. But then you could have individual project leaders that can update their portions of the project all at the same time, anytime they want in their own specific projects. Again, Excel really doesn't have that. And then number eight, resource management. So we already talked just a bit earlier about what if you want to track the people or, uh, you know, the materials, the machinery, whatever, um, that are completing the tasks. So yeah, you could add a column to your Excel file who's doing what, but does Excel alert you when you have one person on two tasks at the same time? Or what if you have another person just sitting around with nothing to do? Excel doesn't uh, give you an easy way of finding that out. So over allocations, under allocations. Um, how do you know whether a person that's working on your project they can devote 100% of their time to that task. What if there are multiple projects going on in your department and maybe this person is busy working on a task in another project at the same time, you want to assign them a task. Project can tell you that, Excel can't tell you that. So project knows not just the, the when, but the who as well. And it will help keep you or help you kind of sanity check one of all or all of your project plans make sure that you're making the best of the resources that you have and like i said i could go on and on and on about the benefits of project over excel when it comes to task management specifically but what i'm going to do right now is i'm going to dive in to microsoft project uh, right now I have, I think it's project 2016 loaded. I'll tell you, if you guys do happen to have Microsoft Project, Project didn't change very much over the versions. So if you do have um, an earlier version of Microsoft Project, uh, they're pretty much the same across the versions until you get to 365. But they're pretty much the same except the reporting feature. I'll show you the reporting feature. They added a reporting tab. Um, but other than that, what I'm showing you here should be very, very similar to what you're using if you've already got it. So let me load my project. Okay, so Hopefully, um, everybody can see my screen here. Microsoft Project loaded in the background. 
Now, I already have a project loaded um, with a bunch of tasks and a bunch of phases. It was a lot easier to do this just than just, just start it from scratch. But if you were to load Microsoft Project from scratch, you just wouldn't see tasks. You would still see the view that you're in here, which is called Gantt Chart View, which would have a task sheet on the left and a place for the Gantt chart on the right. And as you start entering your tasks in, you would see your Gantt chart building over here on the right. It would just be blank until you started to build it. Um, but the first thing that I will tell you about um, Microsoft Project is Project is a database. So the purpose behind a database is that it stores your data. You have lots and lots of data to track or to store or to summarize. This is what Microsoft Project does, stores your data, but it does it with a built-in automatic scheduling engine. And I'll talk about that scheduling engine in a minute, but it is a database to store information. And to store information, um, the easy way to do it for your typical user is to store it in columns and rows. Um, so if you're not used to Microsoft Project, you've never seen it before, or you've never seen an access database, uh, you might be familiar working in Excel. And if you were asked to set up your tasks in Excel, you would use your columns as your fields or your categories of information, right? So if you're looking here on the left, you have a task name column, a duration column, a start, a finish, okay? And then each row is a record. So here we have prepare floor layout. This is an HR project. It's a moving project. We're gonna be moving uh, one of our offices. So we have to prepare the floor layout. That's one of our tasks. It's gonna take 1.5 days. It's gonna start on this date. It's gonna end on this date, that type of thing. Um, this is how you store your data. Now, the nice thing is you don't have to set up the database. The idea behind Microsoft Project is your, the project is already set up for you with everything that you need to record your information. And Microsoft has come up with 400 separate pieces of information that you may want to store. Or, or add to, like task name, duration, start, finish, resource name, uh, salaries. They brainstormed and came up with 400 different categories that you might want to use in your project. Now, I'll tell you, um, most of the people that I deal with with the training in Microsoft Project, um, they maybe use 25, 30 of these categories of information in a project. Maybe if you were a real hardcore project manager, you would use a lot more than that. But they have made 400 pieces of information available to you to track. The thing is, imagine if you loaded Microsoft Project and you saw all 400 columns of information right in front of your face just in case you might use them and you're really only using 10, 15, 20 of the columns. That would be absolutely overwhelming. So what they've done in Microsoft Project to make it easier for you is they've created 25 different views of your project. So you can switch views and when you switch views, you will see different columns of information to track. So for example, like I said, we are in Gantt chart view right now. Gantt chart view is actually, um, it's called a split view, meaning you're actually seeing two things in Gantt chart view. You're seeing a task sheet on the left. This will give you the most um, common fields of information that you need to track for your tasks. Like I said, task name, duration, start, finish. So you've got a task sheet on the left. And then you have a Gantt chart on, a right, on the right, which is just a visual of your tasks, and it does it in a bar format. So depending on how long your task is, the bar will be longer for the longer tasks, shorter for the shorter tasks. There's, there are meanings behind all of these little symbols and things that you see here um, that you know we teach you in Microsoft Project. The diamonds are milestones, that type of thing. But this is Gantt chart view. So this is the first view that appears, and this is where you're going to, well, you're probably going to spend a lot of your time in this view, Gantt chart view. It's the main view. You can enter your tasks. 
But if you were on the task ribbon here, I'm on the task ribbon up at the top, the very first button on the task ribbon is your view button. And there's a drop down underneath it. Some of those 25 views are listed right out here in the open. These are the most popular views. There are more views. You could go to more views. But I'll just give you an idea. I could go to the resource sheet as an example and watch. My screen changes, and this is what this resource sheet view looks like. It's a single view. It's not a kind of like a split view, uh, like I was just showing you. It's just a simple resource sheet where you can list the different people or equipment or groups of people like ABC Movers, Bell Canada, it doesn't have to be an individual, that are going to be assigned to your tasks. You can list them all here. Uh, you can give them groupings so that you can run reports to see what all the admins are doing, for example. You can plug in what their salaries are so that you can track costs. The nice thing about project, which is really difficult to do in Excel, is you know you could track salaries, um, some people per week, some people per hour, some people per day, and then the calculations are all built in to not even worry about that when you need to see a summarization of costs you don't have to do special calculations because some people are recorded as per hour or per day that kind of thing um, and and I'll tell you a lot of people that are in my training they use Microsoft project only to track their tasks so they don't even come to resource view they're happy enough with all the capabilities in task view to record their tasks and see what's going on in Gantt chart view but if you want to take it a step further, you can list your resources and then you can assign your resources to tasks. I kind of always see it as a three-step process. Set up your task list, everything that needs to be done, set up your resource list, and then assign your resources to tasks. So if I go back up to the drop down under that Gantt chart view, uh, we do have a lot of different views. Oh, a lot of people like the calendar view. If you're an Outlook user, this will look familiar to you. So here are my tasks all laid out in a calendar format, just like Outlook would do for you. This is kind of neat. Um, one of the newer features, I can't remember if it, I think it was 2013 that this was introduced, uh, is a view called Team Planner. So if you are in a newer version of Project Team Planner is kind of cool because now you can see um, all your resources on the left. Uh, and then you can see each of these columns is a different date of your project and the things that are assigned. So I can see here Corey Scott over here this, this one week. He's doing this task. You can mouse over it to see exactly what it is or zoom in. Um, but everything that's assigned, you can see here that Lucy Andrews, oh, she doesn't really have a lot going here. Maybe I want to assign some tasks to her. Um, and down at the bottom are tasks that have not been assigned to people yet. So you've added them as tasks in your Gantt chart view, but you just haven't assigned them to anybody. So you can actually drag and drop these up here and assign tasks. I could drag one of these and assign it to Lucy Andrews. So Team Planner is a newer view, but I'll go back to Gantt chart view. Gantt chart view is kind of the standard view. So that's a big thing in Microsoft Project, flipping between your views to be able to see your project different ways or record different pieces of information. But I will tell you, even though you're in a specific view, like a Gantt chart view that has these specific columns set up, you can always modify a view. Like I could always, I'm a big right clicker, I do it with right clicks, but I could always right click one of these column headings and I could insert a column and it will give you all 400 pieces of information that they've come up with and you could choose one to add this column to this view. Uh, like one that I always add is something called task constraints. So, or uh, just constraints. Uh, I won't bother looking for it here, but uh, I like to see if I've set certain tasks like um, this task can start no earlier than this date. So make sure it never goes before this date. It has to start this date or later. Those are constraints that you can do. Hey, Excel can't do that kind of thing. Or you can even create your own custom columns. So out of the 400, 
if you need to track some information that's not listed as one of those 400 pieces of, of, of um, categories, you can just create your own custom column. You can even create your own custom calculations column. So any view can be modified and changed per project. So one thing that I wanted to show you here is, uh, first of all, you can see that I've already put a bunch of tasks into phases. So I have a preliminary phase, a secure vendors phase, prepare site layout phase. It's just as simple as selecting a bunch of tasks once you've entered them in and then clicking the indent button up on your ribbon. As soon as you indent them in, they'll become kind of like subtasks under your main task. You've created a phase. That's how simple it is. So I now have my phases. If I need to insert another task, so if I go down to the bottom here, um, okay, unpack moving boxes. After I unpack moving boxes, I have to return the moving boxes, but I forgot to put this task in. You can just select the row, and if you have any Excel skills, a lot of what you do in project is very similar to Excel, selecting rows and columns and right-clicking and inserting and you know things like that. So I can select the row, I can right-click anywhere in there, and I can choose, uh, where is it, insert task. And just like Excel, your tasks get inserted above whatever task that you had highlighted. So then I could type uh, return moving boxes and press enter. Now, what it's done is it guesstimates that it's going to be one day. Anytime you see a question mark, that is telling you that you did not put a duration on how long this task is going to take. So it, um, project always puts one day with a question mark just to indicate to you um, you didn't say one day, project is guessing it, but you can overwrite it. So I could say, oh, return moving boxes, really that's only gonna take me half a day. And you can go by day, by hour, by month, but I could put 0.5 uh, H for hours, or you could spell out hours, it's up to you. Press enter. Now, this task, if you look way over here on the Gantt chart, this task is, uh, oh, it's probably put it, I don't know where, well, it, I, I can't see it right now, I don't know where it's landed it, it should have been at the beginning of the project, but um, the problem is, it's not appearing over here in the Gantt chart, um, sorry, return movie boxes, it's not appearing here in the Gantt chart uh, after, the unpack moving boxes because we didn't link these tasks together to say after I finish unpack moving boxes I then won't need to return moving boxes so if unpack moving boxes gets delayed then return moving boxes will get delayed automatically I need to link these two tasks together so that project knows that there's a relationship once I finish one, then I can start the other. And really, it's as simple as selecting these two tasks, going up to your task ribbon, and partway down your task ribbon, it looks like a chain link, kind of, um, link tasks, and you can click on that, and it links your tasks together. I guess it's just, I could zoom in, but I guess what I'll do is I'll make uh, return moving boxes two days two days just so you could see it better it was just so small oh and I should link that to the final task as well so that it bumps that final task so now look at my chart I probably linked it incorrectly but um, once you finish this you will next do the next task once you finish that the the project is complete you're at the final um, milestone and like I said Microsoft project has a built-in auto scheduling engine so if if unpacking moving boxes ends up getting delayed maybe it took us five days to unpack the moving boxes so if i change it to five days when i press enter you will see the end date change automatically you don't have to do this yourself it will automatically change the start date of the next task because there's a link there it will automatically bump everything here on your get charts so I'll press enter and everything automatically gets bumped over 
So all of this automation built into Microsoft Project. And just in case you're going to throw yourself into Microsoft Project before you've done any kind of training, I'll warn you, when you start a new project for some strange reason, if you look down at the bottom, the very bottom here, where it says new tasks auto scheduled, um, what it's set for by default is they're manually scheduled. You'll see all your new projects set as manually scheduled, meaning you're not using that scheduling engine. So if you start to put your tasks in and you link them together, if things get delayed or changed, project doesn't automatically reorganize things for you. I would suggest if you really want to take advantage of project scheduling engine, which 99% of the time you do, you know, in the training, I'll go through why you might put one or two tasks as manually scheduled, but um, normally you want to take advantage of the auto scheduling. The first thing you should do when you start a new project is go down here to the bottom and set it up that all your tasks are auto scheduled. Then you are taking advantage of your auto scheduling engine. And then basically you can go in just, just quickly. Uh, you can start marking your tasks as complete. So uh, up here at the top um, on my task ribbon, you can mark 25%, 50%, or you can, you have other options under mark on track where you can get your hands into the nitty gritty to marking your tasks complete. You can assign resources to your tasks. Uh, one way to do it, I'll just drag this split screen over a bit because I know that there's a column underneath here. There's one more column, resource names where uh, let's see how about that return movie boxes. I can go to the resource drop down and say, I'm going to assign this to Corey Scott. He's going to return my movie boxes for me. So this is just a quick, easy way to assign the resources from, remember that resource sheet I showed you? They're all listed there. Well, if they're on your resource sheet, you're going to see them here. This is just one way of assigning your resources. And then project will attract, will track your over allocations and that type of thing. And then one of the big things is if you have to present what's going on in your project, maybe in a visual format, like a chart, a report kind of thing, you don't have to create them. They're already built into Microsoft project. So this is where I said the newer versions of Microsoft Project. They've added this report tab up here at the top. If you're in an earlier version, you would go to your project ribbon and you would see a couple of buttons near the project or near the end of the project ribbon for running your reports. What they've done now is if I go to the report ribbon, they've laid out a lot of the categories right here on the ribbon separately where they would have been under one button on the project ribbon and then they have the separate visual reports which I'll explain to you. So these reports that you see just listed right out here in the open or categories of reports, like if I click the resource drop down, there are two different reports that um, you can run automatically over allocated resources. Um, resource overview, remember your resources are your people or materials that are doing your tasks. Um, they're already built in. These reports will run and load directly in Microsoft Projects. So while well, I'm on resources, let's do something like a resource overview. I'll click on that. So it gives you a resource overview. It goes into your data that you've already been recording in all those columns and rows, and it does all the summarizing for you. You didn't have to create pivot tables to summarize and then create charts based on your pivot tables. They're already set up for you. Um, depending on the report, you might get one chart, two charts, three charts, maybe some data sheets here showing information. And when you click on the different pieces, you can modify these. You're not stuck with them exactly the way they are set up in Microsoft Project. When you click on something that's in your report, over here on the right, there is a way of modifying all of this so it changes what you're seeing in your reports. Okay, if I go back to the report ribbon, so these reports run inside Project, whereas the visual reports, if I go to visual reports, these are charts 
that will, they'll get exported or created in Microsoft Excel. Excel or if you have Visio installed too, they can, some of these reports are, are tied up to Visio. Um, for example, uh, I don't know, how about the resource work availability report? Uh, so when I click on it, you, you can do some modifications here, see it by weeks, by years, by quarters, that type of thing. But when you click view, what it's going to do is it's going to launch Excel. Just give it a second. And now you're actually working in Excel. It's created a sheet down here for chart one. And if you know anything about charts or what it does is it also creates a pivot table. So if you're a pivot table user, you'll recognize what's here on the right side of your screen, the pivot table. You can modify anything here. You can change this pivot table around. You're in Excel. It works exactly how pivot tables work in Excel. If you know anything about charts, you can click on your chart and go up to your design ribbon and change anything with the design of the chart, the form at. So those visual reports, they get sent to Excel and you modify in Excel, whereas these reports are created right there in Microsoft Project. But you see how easy it is, right, to create a report. No setting it up. Uh, one more thing I'll mention, because I do want to take some time for questions. One more thing I'll mention is uh, another thing that you can do in Microsoft Project, I'll just go back to Gantt Chart View. Uh, is when you set up your project and you put in all your tasks, you assign your resources, you create your phases, you link your tasks together, before your project starts, you can create a project baseline on the project ribbon, set baseline. And what a baseline is, is you can take a snapshot of the way everything is right now. Then what you can do is you can start working on your project. So things will get delayed. I don't think I've ever seen a project where something hasn't been delayed. Um, so things will get delayed. Things will get put off. Your project will change. You might assign a different resource because this first resource didn't have time. So maybe three months down the road, you want to see where you are now compared to where you were when you sort of guesstimated your project when you first set it up. You can compare your current to your project baseline. I haven't made any change, not, not very many changes, so I can't really show you, but there is a way of comparing where you are now to your baseline, and you can actually create up to 11 different baselines. So if you have a really long project, you can create a baseline, you know, I don't know, every three months you could do this, that kind of thing. It's up to you how many baselines, but you can do comparisons to, you know, three months back, six months back, nine months back. You never lose information. So, so many different, reasons you should be using Microsoft Project, that it makes it so easy for you. Okay, what I'm going to do, because I've talked a lot, what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you a chance to put your questions into the chat window. Um, so I haven't loaded the chat window yet. Actually, where is my chat window? Um, some of you may have already been uh, putting some questions in, but if you do have any questions, there's something that you needed me to show you, or you've been thinking about using Microsoft Project, but you had certain questions, pop them right now into the chat window. I'll give you a couple of minutes. And meanwhile, while I'm waiting for the couple of minutes, I'm just going to quickly show you, I've just switched over to the browser in case you are planning to get Microsoft Project and you want to do some Microsoft Project training. Uh, the training is great, uh, if I do say my, so myself. Uh, we have a lot of, of Microsoft Project trainers. Um, right now I'm on the JN software consulting site. Like I said, they're sister companies, JN Software and CompUEs. So if you happen to go to the JN Software Consulting site, uh, you have, I'll start with the courses. So you can see right here, we can get to courses. You can either narrow it down to the specific categories here, or you can just generally go to all courses if you're curious to browse through them all. But if I were to go to Microsoft and then down to Project, just to give you an idea, 
since you're sort of in a project webinar. We have level one, level two. Um, if you're interested in a level one project training, you can go down to more info and register. It's really easy to read about it and register. It gives you extra information of what, what's involved in the course, how long it is. And over here on the right, you can register add to the class cart. So finding courses and registering for courses is very simple. Okay, I'll go back. And like I said, uh, we also offer the database services, consulting services. Um, if you go to the, if you're interested in consulting services, it tells you about it here. But right at the very bottom of consulting services, there's a contact us today. The databases you can enter information in and send uh, a request to talk to somebody. And also up at the top, we have a lot of free resources. Um, like I said, we have the YouTube videos. We have the blog if I click on free resources. So you can sign up for the blog at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we have a great series going right now, uh, Working Smart From Home. Uh, this is very interesting if you want to take the time to read through some of these articles. And um, of course, you're already in the webinar, but we do offer the free webinars. And I'll just give you an idea, just in case somebody told you about it and you hadn't seen this page, but uh, we have coming up a uh, quick start to Visio. So if you're ever interested in, in um, seeing what Visio is all about, that next webinar is on Visio. The one after that is OneNote. If you're interested in what is this OneNote all about, we'll run a webinar on OneNote. So we have a bunch of them um, scheduled here in advance. Consulting supercharges your business, how consulting supercharges. Organizing training for associates. Lots of great webinars coming up. And CompuEase is basically the same. If I go to the CompuEase site, so you've got your course list, you can go to, you know, the project training. And it depends on what you're interested in. And really, like I said, um, this site will be revamped because it really doesn't matter if you're taking, if you're in project 2013, project 2016, that type of thing. It's going to be the same. I always get a mixed class. So if you see a date coming up for project 2016, go ahead and grab it. If it's earlier than one of the earlier versions here, go ahead and register for that class because uh, it, you're basically going to get the same training. And then again, up at the top, you've got your free webinars and resources. There's our blog. Okay. So let me see. I'm just checking the chat window. Manage participants. I'll bring myself back. Uh, okay, so I'm back in Microsoft Project right now. We have a couple of minutes. Is there anything that you wanted me to show you or any questions you've had about Microsoft Project? Um, it's it's kind of different difficult because we don't talk back and forth so I'm not sure where most of you are if you're thinking about purchasing project to start um, monitoring your tasks or if you're using project you needed a little more information anything guys like I hope this gave you some kind of an idea of what project is about tracking your tasks tracking your resources assigning your resources to tasks uh, you can monitor whether you've gone uh, overboard with your costs, um, where your costs are now compared to where you thought you would be. Or like I said, you could just use project just to track your tasks. So many people that take the project training tell me, no, 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 I'm just going to use it for task management. And that's absolutely fine. The Gantt chart and task management. Anybody? I may have missed this, but is there a way to link to SharePoint? Um, hmm, that's actually a very good question. Now with Excel, I know you can import your information to from Excel in, 
the actual linking, um, you can share it to. Hmm. Very, very good question, Amy. You know what? Uh, what we're going to do is, uh, no, I didn't mention SharePoint. I'm actually not the SharePoint trainer. We have another trainer that, that um, is a SharePoint user. So I'm not sure if it can link to SharePoint. If you can actually, I'm assuming you're talking about linking, like if it gets updated in SharePoint, it updates your project as opposed to importing. You'd be able to import the information, meaning cut off all ties just a way of getting your information, but I'm assuming you're talking about linking. So what I'll do is I will definitely get back to you on that question um, this afternoon for sure. Uh, we should have your email or if you want to give, uh, give Mel your email, but we, we should have your email, Amy. Yeah, I'll get back to you on that. Any other projects, questions guys? Or you could even ask me over the uh, over the um, phone or whatever. You don't have to put it into the chat. Okay, good. Mel has your email, Amy. No? So this was good enough? This gave you an idea of what it's about? Perfect. Great. That's great, guys. Then um, that's the end of our webinar. I hope you all have a great day. Hey, Bruce. Uh, thanks. Thanks, too. Um, I hope you all have a good day. I hope this was a good introduction to your Microsoft project. And uh, hopefully, maybe I'll see some of you guys in the Project Level 1 training. It's a two-day course. And we cover everything. It gives you an excellent foundation just the project level one, you will be able to get up and going with everything that you pretty much have to do in Microsoft Project. All right. So have a great day, guys. And hopefully I'll talk to you soon. Take care, guys.